This tutorial is sponsored by Invato Elements. Some of you have probably already seen this post on my Instagram several days ago. I've received a couple of requests to make a tutorial on it and I want you guys to know that's still the only reason I make these videos. That being said, make sure you follow me on Instagram so you never miss out on any of my new artworks and of course feel free to let me know which posts you'd like to learn more about as I always make tutorials based on your requests and now let's get into the video. Let's start by opening Adobe Photoshop, create a new document. This is the standard resolution I usually go for. Let's drag and drop the first image. Let's uh, scale it up to match the document. Hit confirm, rename the layer to something more descriptive. There are certain elements that are a bit distracting, which I wanna remove, such as these pedestrians over here. So first of all, right click on the layer and choose rasterize, then select the lasso tool and draw a mask around the subject which you want to get rid of then with the layer selected go to edit and choose content aware fill and as you can see in this preview right here the pedestrian has been magically erased from our image now let's click ok to confirm the edit and we can apply the same process on other elements so i'm gonna draw a mask around this guy right here select the original street layer and open content aware fill now, as you can see, this doesn't always work as good as you expect it. This time the result looks a little bit patchy, but notice this green area right here. This is the section that Photoshop is sampling pixels from to replace the object you're trying to remove. So to refine that, we can expand or tighten the sampling area and see what that does. All right, I think that looks better. It doesn't have to be perfect right now. We're gonna be adding a bunch of new elements on top of that. So these edits will be barely noticed. You can apply the same process as many times as you wish till you have a cleaner scene. You will notice that the content aware fill has been generating new layers on top of our original street image. So to keep things organized, let's group all these in one folder, which I'm gonna call street. And if you're confident with the changes, you can also convert the folder to a smart object. Now, usually I like to add more depth to my compositions. So let's go ahead and add a bit of blur on the background. First, let's duplicate this layer by holding Alt on the keyboard and dragging the layer towards the top. Rename the copy to street underscore DOF, rasterize the layer and then go to filter, blur and choose lens blur. I'm gonna keep the radius somewhere around five and click OK. I don't want the whole image to be blurred. So let's draw a mask around the top half and add a layer mask. And with the layer mask selected, you can use the eraser tool to feather the edges out and blend both focused and blurred areas a bit better. Before moving on to the main elements of my artwork, I would like to add some details to set the overall mood of the scene. That's exactly why I have this high res image of a spider web, which I want to attach to the buildings. And by holding control on the keyboard, I can stretch the corners independently to match the perspective of the buildings. And since the background is black, we can switch the layers blend mode to screen to enable transparency. The edges are still very obvious, so let's add a layer mask and use the eraser tool to feather the edges. Okay, that looks cool. I do have another similar image, but this time let's add it on the right side instead. Awesome, now it looks like a huge spider has actually passed by this street. Let's group both layers in one folder. The color is still way off, so let's create a new exposure layer. Create a clipping mask to make sure it only affects the web folder. Bring the exposure down a bit. I think the edges of the web images still need some further blending. So let's adjust that. That looks good. Maybe I'll bring some exposure back up. All right, nice. The next thing I wanna do is make the scene a little bit more dramatic and foggy. So create a new layer. Let's call this background fog. Let's set the color to light gray. And using a custom brush, which by the way, doesn't come with Photoshop by default, but I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Scale it up a bit and simply start painting 
around the scene here. I'm trying to keep it more dense towards the center and far in the distance here than it is around the rest of the scene. Now, if you look at some fog references online, you'll notice that usually it makes light sources softer and a bit glowy. So let's go ahead and replicate that on all light sources in our image that are located behind the atmosphere. So create a new hue and saturation adjustment layer, enable colorize, change the hue to yellow, bring the saturation all the way down and the brightness up. Next, select the layers mask, press both control and I to invert and using the default brush, let's start painting on top of every single light source. And obviously you can adjust the intensity and size of the light glow depending on the actual light source itself. I really love adding details like this. They are often hard to notice, but actually make a huge difference when it comes to making the artwork more realistic. And I guess that brings us to the next big element in our scene, which is the spider itself. Now, usually whenever I need such an image, I spend a long time trying to find the right one online. The biggest challenge is to find something that matches the perspective of my scene and is easy to mask out, but not this time, thanks to today's sponsor, Envato Elements, which offers a huge library of stock images, graphic assets, motion templates, and pretty much everything you need to get creative projects done. Now, my favorite category on Envato Elements is 3D objects. The 360 degree preview allows me to generate still images at any angle from 3D objects to get the perfect perspective that fits my scene. The frames are available to download in PNG with full transparency, which makes them ready to use and perfect to drop onto any composition with zero masking effort. And that's exactly where I got most of the elements which I'll be using in this video. There are thousands of various 3D models on Envato Elements, which you can download instantly to use in your projects or simply browse for inspiration. Envato Elements hosts a massive library that features millions of creative digital assets, including high quality and royalty free stock photos, sound effects, fonts, templates, and pretty much anything you need to speed up your workflow and open up a world of creative possibilities for all your design projects. You can download unlimited assets with just a single fee, which is really affordable and comes with a 50% off discount if you opt in for the yearly subscription. So make sure you check Envato Elements now using the link in the description box. Back to the video, let's scale the spider up. I'm gonna position it in a way that its legs are right on the sidewalk, just like that. Let's rename the layer. The color is still way off, so as a first step, I'm gonna use Photoshop's new Harmonize filter, which you can find with the same old neural filters. Let's change the reference to our background image, wait for it to process, and click OK to generate the Harmonize layer. I think the filter does a very good job at matching colors. However, I still want to improve that manually. But before that, let's rename the harmonized layer, disable the original one, duplicate this, draw a white mask around the shadow, add a layer mask, let's convert the layer to smart object, press Ctrl T to transform, and now stretch it forward towards the camera. This is a more natural look since our primary source of light in the scene is coming from the distance behind the spider itself. I think that looks pretty good and once you're confident with the adjustment, you can use the eraser tool to feather the edges. All right, that looks much better. I think we still need to work more on shadows. So let's create a new layer, call it shadow. And with the foreground color set to black, we will use the brush to add some contact shadow underneath the spider. And you can use the eraser to shape the shadow. There are so many ways to do this, but I usually go with a simple method of painting a really dark spot on the contact area and feather it down as we move further, which gives us a decent realistic look. Okay, now that's done. So let's go ahead and group all the spider and shadow layers in one folder. And let's focus once again on matching the colors. 
So add a new exposure layer above the folder, create a clipping mask. I think we need to bring the exposure down, adjust both offset and gamma slightly. Mm, perhaps I'll try with a levels adjustment layer on top of that. Let's slide the highlights back, bring the white output down. I think it's almost there. Let's add a hue and saturation layer this time, create a clipping mask, enable colorize. I want to use this to add a bit of a cool glow effect around the red areas to make the spider look a bit more lively and scary. Bring the saturation up, increase the brightness. Now let's change the blend mode to linear dodge. Now with the mask selected, press on Ctrl and I to invert, select the brush tool, Let's set the hardness to zero, make sure the foreground color is set to white and simply paint over the red spots to create the glow effect. And remember, you can always press X on your keyboard to toggle between the foreground and background colors. Setting it to black allows us to use the brush tool to erase or mask out some parts of the effect if needed. I'm just gonna use that to reveal the eyes of the spider, or at least that's what I think they are. I really thought most spiders have 8 eyes. Maybe those are not eyes? Well, if you happen to be a spider savvy, this is your chance to shine in the comment section. Okay, now look at that! I'm getting a bit obsessed with the glowing red spots. So to give them even more presence, let's add some red reflection on the ground. So right below the spider folder, let's create another hue and saturation layer. Let's call this one ground glow. Again, enable colorize, set the hue to red. We can increase the saturation a bit. Uh, next, let's invert the mask and simply paint a soft reflection below the spider, just like that. I love it. Okay, enough with this part. Let's go ahead and add a bit of weight to the spider. It is large in scale, but it's still not so convincing. We can fix that by adding small details as simple as uh, some cracks on the ground. Now I have the perfect image for that. So let's bring that over here right below the front leg. Squeeze it down a bit to match the angle of the road. Let's add a layer mask, select a black brush and erase around the edges to blend the rubbles with the road. The color is still way off, so let's add a new curves layer on top, switch to green and bring the midtones down, create a clipping mask. Uh, maybe I will reduce the red midtones as well until we achieve a bluish tone that's closer to that of the road. Okay, I think the color is fine, but it's still too bright. So let's switch to the RGB curve, bring the midtones down, same thing for the highlights and I think we can try to lift the shadows up to match the faded look of the street. Awesome, it's almost perfect. Now do you remember when I mentioned the main light source behind the spider? I think an object with this size should naturally block some of that light. So let's go ahead and fake some shadow and light rays. Let's create a new exposure layer, bump up the exposure. Now draw a rectangle around the top half and press delete to eliminate the exposure effect. Select the mask and use the eraser to feather the edges. And using a smaller eraser, we can go ahead and get rid of exposure in front of those parts that are supposed to block light. This way you can create the illusion of long shadows that cast far in towards the camera. You can always use the road lines as a reference so you can achieve the light rays effect. Let's check that out. Nice, I think that looks good enough. I'd rather keep this really subtle than overdo it. So let's move on to the next step. This time I wanna add a bit of fog both in front and around the spider itself for a mystical effect. So again, let's set the color to light gray and with the same fog brush we used earlier, randomly paint around the spider. You can also emphasize the effect around the legs and body to make it seem like the spider's mass is carrying some of that atmosphere with it as it moves towards the foreground. 
I've actually achieved this look accidentally as I was adding the fog and I think it gives the spider more dimension and makes the scene look much much more realistic. I think it looks really cool like that. Alright enough with the big monster and let's move on to the second subject here which is the hoodie guy and by the way I've also generated this one out of a 3D object from Envato Elements. Let's give the layer a proper name. Now following the depth of field principle which we applied earlier and since the guy is much closer to the camera it should be a bit out of focus so let's rasterize the layer go over to filter blur and add some lens blur this time let's set the radius to 8 and confirm and i'm sure you know that the next step will be to match the colors of the new object to the rest of the scene so let's add a new curves layer create a clipping mask switch to blue and let's raise the mid tones a bit now let's add an exposure layer slide the gamma to the right a little offset a little same goes for the exposure cool almost there let's add a levels adjustment layer this time clip the mask bring the highlights down let's slide the mid tones over here okay looking good let's reduce the white output as well Great, I think the color is pretty much there. The next step is much more fun and creative. I wanna add some edge highlights, which will really make a huge difference. So let's add another exposure layer. This time bump up the exposure, invert the layers mask, and use a small brush to paint around the shoulders as well as the head. It already looks really good but there is a way to make that even better and that's just by paying attention to the color of the lights and glows in front of the man. There is a bit of blue present in the scene so let's create a new hue and saturation layer, create a clipping mask, enable colorize, set the hue to blue, let's bump the saturation up a little, maybe make it a bit darker, set the blend mode to screen. Next, let's invert the mask and same thing here, just paint around the edges to give the highlights a bit of color. I think we can use the same technique to add a little bit of red as well since we have a decent area of red reflection on the ground as well as the red glow that's coming from the spider itself. Fantastic! I think the highlights helped blend the guy in really well with the rest of our scene however the overall image still looks a bit dull and i think we need to work a bit more on color grading so let's go to the very top create a new exposure layer let's slide the gamma to the right increase the exposure a bit let's add a curves layer bring the highlights up and the shadows down a bit to add some contrast I still want to bring more color in so maybe I'll play with the blue curves. You can use your own judgment here and play with the colors until you achieve the look of your choice. If it still looks a bit desaturated, you can take the easy road and add another saturation layer on top. Let's try adjusting the blue a bit, add some saturation, maybe adjust the reds as well, something like that. Let's see. All right, that looks great. I'm happy with this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. If you like it, then a sub from you would be highly appreciated. Other than that, don't forget to give this video a like. Hit the bell so you don't miss on any future videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.